Hello, I'm Brendan Stern, and I'm honored to be here with Chris Wagner. As one of our JDC's spotlight on deaf Jewish leaders in the community, your background history is so long. But right now, you're the COO of ZVRS and Purple Communications and from former president of the National Association of the Deaf, NAD. And you were the former president of the Florida Association of the Deaf. Oh, long, long time ago. Oh, yes, a long time ago. This is a list of accomplishments goes on. Really, I'm thrilled to be talking with you. I've seen your name and I've seen you around, but I've never gotten the opportunity to sit down and chat with you. I'm really looking forward to this for selfish reasons to get to know you better and to ask you questions. Okay, are you ready? Yes, excited to be here. Now I'm curious, can you tell me a story of when a wise person, either present or in the past, has inspired you to become a leader? Really, when I look back, I definitely have to mention my grandmother. My grandmother was the one who raised me, and she was in her 60s when she had to take care of me. She had really strong Jewish values and instilled that in me. Growing up, she always taught me to do the right thing. She always told me, have complaints, change it into action. Take action yourself. You can't expect other people to fix it for you. You have to fix it yourself. She gave me guidance. I grew up oral, and when I got into RIT, I realized I had leadership skills. I credit it to my grandmother, who always taught me to take responsibility for myself and for the community. That was part of my Jewish identity, and I never really connected that as part of my Jewish identity until later in life, and I realize now it stems from my grandmother. I wish I recognized her showing me the way while she was still alive, but now I'm finally connecting the dots. This is how I became a leader today, and she inspires me to this date. Same with me. I cherish my grandmother, so I can imagine your relationship with her. I'm curious, I have a follow-up question. You mentioned your grandmother always said, always do the right thing. It makes me think of the one quote that I always loved. It's by President LBJ from back in the day. It says, if I remember it correctly, it says, doing the right thing is easy, knowing and doing the right thing is hard. You mentioned your grandmother always taught you values. What values are those? And how did you know what's right or wrong from your experience as a leader? That's funny. I was born when Lyndon B. Johnson was president. It's funny to look back at this, actually. I, I think it's about being fair with everyone and not to become selfish. Not to be selfish for any reason. We must respect others and not be selfish to appreciate the things in life. Not everyone has the same opportunity to appreciate many things. My grandmother told me to always consider those people who don't have that same opportunity. That's a well said statement. Fairness is really a universal value found in many different cultures. Valuing fairness, that's the golden rule. Fascinating. Now for the second question. I'm curious, looking back as a Jewish leader, is there anything you would have done differently if you knew no one was judging you as a Jew? Well, I have to admit there were challenges. I have to keep in mind though that different people have different opinions and different perspectives. I always find myself having to be careful in that sense. I try to watch how I push my message. I'm always careful. And again, it's about respecting other people's opinions. There's some, well, in today's political climate, it makes it very hard to not get your emotions involved. But I learned how to deal with it and respect other people's opinions. I identify as Jewish, and yes, we are all the same, but that's the hard part about leadership. 
maybe I'll get more of a straight to the point, but have you ever felt judged because you were a Jew? Or do you feel like it never happened to you? If so, do you mind sharing your experience? Yes, I experienced it from work and through different organizations. Hmm. When I, well, when they pushed some religious issues, I became defensive. I, I didn't want this to become the discussion of the group, so I intervened. And they judged me and said, right, it's because you're Jewish. And yes, it happens. People try to push their Christian values. I respect it, but it shouldn't be brought on the table for a discussion. That's where the judgment happened. That's interesting. I need to laugh when you said you were intervened and they said, right, because you're Jewish. And not acknowledging the subject of religion and Christian values. This is general, but I read an article recently that says Jewish culture, not really all of us, but generally speaking, Jewish culture sees that intervening is a sign of respect. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but now I look back and analyze, it may be true. True. It's very true. So in some sense, maybe they're right when they said, right, it's because you're Jewish when you intervened. It's not to point out the Christian subjects, but overall, it's good to intervene. It should be seen as a sign of respect because it shows that we are engaged in talking, thinking, motivated, and having a discussion. It's something I've always told my wife. It's like I'm defensive of my family and their ancestors' fight for recognition and equality. You know what I mean? I get it, right? It's about respect, and I, I have to defend that. Now, third question. On the same subject, can you share your experience when you realized your identity as a Jewish person influenced your leadership? I think my identity has made a huge impact on my leadership style. I'm very compassionate, and I have the desire to support the community. I feel like my identity is really strong in how I lead groups, showing passion and empathy for different groups all across the board. So yeah, I strongly believe that looking back, my grandmother, and even my dad, my, my real father, whom I actually met for the first time three years ago, made me realize we all had the same values and passion. And I re really see it as something in the DNA. Your father is Jewish too? Yes. Interesting. Fourth question. If you could share one book that our audience should read about being Jewish, What book would you recommend? I love to read leadership books. I tend to read a, a lot of different books, but one I would recommend is, let me see here, it's um, I just, oh, I found it. Uh, it's called Inspired Jewish Leadership by Dr. Erica Brown. It's more of a book which provides us with tools of how to provide leadership. In, in the context of the different issues, I, I read about how pe different people perceive different things and how they approach different issues within the workplace, in the office, or outside of work on a personal level. Or, while reading this book, I was amazed and thought this was a really good book. So it's Dr. Erica Brown called Inspired Jewish Leadership. Perfect. What's nice about this interview series is I continue to learn about new book recommendations and add it to my reading list. You told me about this book. It's now on my to-read list. Last question. Jewish people tend to feel pulled in different directions. Not feeling sure of themselves because of competing values, feelings, and relations with others. Can you share your experience of what may be true for you?
Hmm. That's a good question. I think as a reformed person, there was some difficulty some difficulty with some family members that are more conservative or orthodox. So, wow, yeah, there's different opinions, different perspectives on some issues, whether it be national or global. For example, what's happening in Israel? There are some traditional thoughts about the things happening there. So, yes, oftentimes when I'm talking with them, I feel pulled in a different direction, and they're like, what's up with you? But, again, it's about respect. It's all about the respect. For example, one issue here in Texas, where I live now, it's terrible. There are many hot topics here that I don't agree with. So that makes me think of my Jewish values. Our synagogue shared statements against the governor, and I'm on board. But then I see other synagogues that share different perspectives. It feels like that time of the year where tension rises on different issues. I live here in Maryland. I read the Washington Post and it surprises me that Texas is still making headlines. So I can imagine your daily life. I'm curious, you mentioned respect. Do you show respect for controversial issues? Or do you push it aside? Or do you just go ahead and try to have a discussion in a respectful way? What's your approach with controversial issues? I think having a conversation is very healthy. I don't push it aside to avoid it. There's no way to build respect if you don't have a healthy conversation. I think it's important to have a healthy conversation and show respect for different opinions. Don't challenge them and get into arguments because everybody likes to understand the way. I explain why I view it my way. People acknowledge why and I get their respect too. So I think it's healthy to have a conversation. It's okay. It's what we do every day. Have healthy conversations. Whether we like it or not, I think it's important to understand that every individual is different. They have their own opinions, just have a healthy conversation and a respectful conversation. Yes, I'm happy you close with that message because in my studies in political science, research shows that healthy dialogue tends to pinpoint problems in communication. The importance of communication is to listen to understand rather than arguing to change minds. It is possible to change one other's mind, but that comes later. Start with coming to understand, deep understanding of one another's belief and values. Understand why they do it. That's the way so your message is important. It's a powerful message. I think that's all for our interview today. You're very busy. I appreciate you making time to talk with me. I really enjoyed listening to your answers. And today is the new year. And Yom Kippur is next week. Since it's New Year's Eve, best of luck in your meditations before we kick off the New Year's. Thank you for your time. I appreciate everything. I hope you have a good year and be healthy. Bye. Bye-bye now.